Malice has a significant role in Breath of the Wild and the sequel, as an extremely infectious and dominant force that causes immense devastation to the environment, corrupting and torturing the land until only death and decay remain. It's the tremendous energy that fuels Calamity Ganon and is capable of inflicting massive damage onto anything it comes into contact with. In the sequel, the revived Ganondorf's incredible power is illustrated to be fueled with an unreal volume of malice. Unlike Calamity Ganon who was consumed by it, Ganondorf appears to not only have mastery over his malice, but also the ability to manipulate its deadly power to the absolute extreme. There seems to be no limit to the utter destruction Ganondorf could bring to Hyrule, yet the original Japanese text of the Zelda games reveal how malice could inflict even further damage beyond imagination and ultimately corrupt the gods themselves. Malice, the malevolent force that caused Hyrule to suffer despair in multiple timelines, originates from Demise, a demon king who bore intense hatred and resentment towards the gods tribe. Demise, or the bringer of Demise as he is referred to in Japanese, curses that his hatred will continue to exist infinitely after his eradication. This curse is a direct reference to a malicious incarnation of the very essence of his hatred and resentment, signifying the reason for Ganondorf's multiple existence. However, the original Japanese text makes it clear that the bringer of Demise's hatred is much more than just a powerful emotion that's rooted in evil. The specific word that the bringer of Demise uses to refer to his hatred in Japanese is Onnen. I fully explain this word and its significance in this video that reveals Demise's true origin should you be interested in how it relates to the hidden lore of the Relentless Demon King. To clarify the most important part, the Japanese word onnen refers to the enormous amounts of hate, resentment, and vengefulness that drive spirits into madness. In short, onnen is the very energy that fuels a furious ghost or spirit. Not only is onnen the term used to describe the fuel that powers Calamity Ganon, but also for all sources of malice entirely in the original Japanese version of Breath of the Wild. This means that all malice including the dark substance that plagues the land of Hyrule in Breath of the Wild as a result of Calamity Ganon is literally the physical manifestation of the Bring of Demise's hatred. What's more is that in the Japanese version of Skyward Sword, with his final breath after his defeat, the Bring of Demise curses that his hatred isn't the only thing that will be reincarnated. In Japanese, he expresses specifically that the curse of the demon tribe will forever be reborn, whereas in the English version, all textual hints towards the existence of the demon tribe have been removed. There are several times where the demon tribe has been mentioned directly in the Japanese lore of the Zelda games. For instance, in the Japanese version of A Link to the Past, Aganim refers to the tribe of evil as the demon tribe, yet the full extent to what the curse of the demon tribe precisely entails is not explained. We can reveal the dark truth of this curse by looking at Breath of the Wild's Hyrule Compendium, a convenient feature of the Sheikah Slate that contains details about every enemy. When looking at the Hyrule compendium entries in English for some of the weaker enemies, like the Keys for instance, we are told that they are a nocturnal bat-like species that are quite the nuisance to engage in combat against. However, when taking a look at these entries in Japanese, a little more detail can be discovered. As part of the lower grade class of the demon tribe, they take a similar form to that of a bat, appearing in the dark of the night. They are difficult to battle as their flight patterns are irregular, but can be dealt with in just one blow. Sometimes they attack in large groups, but are dispersed with a composed single strike. It is revealed to us that even these keys are actually members of the demon tribe, something that has been erased from the English localization. Secondly, it seems that the members of the demon tribe are assigned a rank or class corresponding to their power level. In the case of the Keys, for instance, they are classified as a low class demon tribe member. What's perhaps more interesting is what the Japanese Hyrule Compendium reveals about the cursed variants of enemies. Link can encounter these cursed enemies when they emerge from Ganon's malice. If Link dares to approach them, they immediately become hostile and mindlessly chase after him. 
When looking at the entry for one of these cursed enemies in the English version of the Hyrule Compendium, such as the cursed Lizalfos, it is stated that Ganon's malice has possessed them, giving them a kind of life after death. They are but a mere fragment of their former selves, void of all intelligence, and will thoughtlessly attack anyone who approaches. Yet, when looking at the Japanese version for these entries, the exact energy that is powering these fallen creatures is revealed. Skulls of Lizalfos that have been seized by hatred. Only their cunningness remain from their previous life. They rush and attack anything that approaches. They are more agile than the skulls of Bokoblins. The Japanese word used to refer to the hatred that these enemies have been seized by is in fact Onnen, which is the very same malicious energy that derives from the bringer of demise. This means that these cursed enemies are but mere slaves to malice. They have been forcefully fueled, or rather, possessed with hatred that may not have been their own. When looking at the Hyrule Compendium entries for the non-cursed variants of these monsters in Japanese, it is revealed that they are demons, whereas this information does not exist in the English version. Therefore, these cursed enemies are simply empty shells of the fallen members of the demon tribe that are merely being manipulated by the malicious intent of the Bring of Demise's curse, forcing them to continue being reanimated with no escape even after their death. Originating from the Bring of Demise's hatred fueled spirit, it can also possess and reanimate the bodies that the souls of the demon tribe once resided in. In Skyward Sword, Malice is even depicted to be able to corrupt and torture the very souls or hearts of beings too. Located in the Faron Woods region, behind the Floria waterfall, lies one of the three dungeons Link must visit during his search for the Sacred Flames. This dungeon is the Ancient Cistern, a place that, at first glance, appears to resemble a serene paradise. It's only until Link progresses deep enough into the dungeon when this paradise's dark secret is revealed. Located in the depths of the ancient cistern lies an ominous abyssal underworld, swamped with malicious purple water that, much like the malice in Breath of the Wild, will damage and inflict a curse to Link should he come into contact with it. This hellish place is populated with cursed bokoblins, decaying undead demons, whose hate accords them the ability to reanimate after their death. Similar to how the Bringer of Demise's Malice is capable of reanimating or possessing the corpses of the demons in Breath of the Wild and transform them into cursed demons, these cursed Bokoblins also suffer the same fate, forever stuck in an endless loop of reanimation. Cursed Bokoblins drop evil crystals, which the English version describes as a crystallized chunk of monster malice, whereas the original Japanese description reveals something rather unsettling crystal of evil, a crystallized material from the evil heart of demons, obtained mostly from demons who possessed cursed power. The Japanese text reveals that these crystals are actually the very heart of the cursed Bokoblins that have crystallized into pure evil, implying that malice is also capable of corrupting the very souls or hearts of even demons. These aren't the only times where malice has been depicted as having manipulative or possessive properties in the Zelda series either. In Twilight Princess, we learn that the ancient sages had intended on executing Ganondorf in the mirror chamber atop the Arbiter's grounds. However, they were unable to do so due to Ganondorf's utilization of the Triforce of Power. In a desperate attempt to prevent Ganondorf from escaping his imprisonment, the sages activated the Mirror of Twilight and sealed him in the Twilight Realm. In the English version of the Hyrule Historia, it is explained that the moment that this happens, the Twilight Realm is transformed into a domain of madness. Whereas in Japanese, the word used for Ganondorf's malice is Onnen, which is the very same word that the Bringer of Demise uses to refer to his incarnation of hatred that will continue to exist for the rest of time. Therefore, the reason the Twilight Realm was affected so aggressively is because Ganondorf's malice is actually powered by the Bringer of Demise's hatred. Ganondorf has even demonstrated to possess the ability to share his malice and its power with others, which is exactly what he does in Twilight Princess, housing his power in Zant. The self-proclaimed leader of the Twilight Realm then uses borrowed power to transform all of the Twilight into Shadow Beasts. Thus, malice is an extremely sinister cursed energy with transformative properties that, once harnessed, can possess and corrupt the very life force of an individual or alter the very fabrications of a world. But how 
how can a simple feeling of hatred cause entire kingdoms to fall or entire dimensions to be thrown into a state of chaos? Why did the demons choose to follow Ganondorf and Demise despite being aware of their fate being full of despair? To find the answer to all of these mysteries and discover the devastating truth of what specifically it is that's empowering these feelings of hatred to such extremes, we first have to look at the Japanese version of the Hyrule Historia. Page 113 in the English version of the Hyrule Historia states that Ganondorf is full of wickedness and hatred. That much is obvious. By looking at the same passage in Japanese, we can discover the very energy that makes malice or onnen as deadly as it is and ultimately uncover the hidden dark truth as to how Ganondorf's malice could bring much more than simple despair to Hyrule in the sequel. Ganondorf's malice is filled with evil energy and hatred. The most important part of this sentence is the word used in Japanese to describe the evil energy of Ganondorf's malice. Considering how Ganondorf's malicious character is portrayed throughout the Zelda series, the revelation that his malice is powered by evil energy is of no surprise. Yet the original Japanese word for evil energy that appears here is considerably more descriptive due to having extensive underlying meanings and implications that just don't exist in English. The word used to refer to Ganondorf's evil energy in Japanese is jaki. This is where things get really interesting. The Japanese word jaki is the very energy that powers the Bring of Demises and Ganondorf's onnen or hatred in the Zelda series. Jaki refers to a very particular type of evil that manifests within a host, representing the dark side of one's heart, which usually forms from a desire to inflict harm to someone. This energy can spread from the source host like a disease. It becomes a parasite that feeds on the purity of one's soul and can even taint others whose heart is pure or of good will. The purpose of Jaki is to dirty or corrupt the goodness in one's soul and can even manifest in one whose heart was originally pure, growing from any negative emotion at all, including anger, resentment, envy, depression or even simple emotionally unstable thoughts. In Japanese culture, those who have accumulated large amounts of jaki are revered as extremely powerful by other demons, therefore are recognized as a leader. Demons are blinded by this dark energy and become obsessed with power. This explains why so many demons and monsters seem to obey Ganondorf's orders so easily, as those who possess a large volume of jaki are considered to be extremely powerful, thus are worshipped as the ruler over the entire demon tribe. It's entirely possible that these demons, such as the ones in Breath of the Wild, were not created to be angry in their nature and may have not actively chosen to remain in hatred and resentment. Despite any free will of their own that they may have had, due to the intensity of Ganon's malice, they eternally regress further down in sanity and continue to look up to Ganon as their ultimate leader. It's not until they witness even stronger power firsthand themselves that their eyes are opened, as is the case with King Bobin in Twilight Princess, who speaks to Link after being defeated a final time, expressing how he follows the strongest side, which is all he has ever known. So many powerful enemies or bosses in the Zelda universe are considerably large or even grow in size when tainted by evil. The reason for this and the explanation for why Ganon's beast forms and other antagonists are so large is that the bigger the entity physically, the more Jackie they can possess. As Jackie is an evil energy that continues to grow endlessly, a large vessel to house it becomes necessary, which essentially means the bigger the entity, the more powerful it can become. Consequently, the those who have large amounts of this energy may not ever be able to return to their former self and, as a result, become something beyond that of a monster. This could explain why in Breath of the Wild, for instance, Dark Beast Ganon, despite his enormous size, could not contain the extremity of the evil energy and, as a consequence, was completely swallowed by his own malice. In Age of Calamity, we witness a similar fate before Astor, which in turn also shows us a glimpse of what could happen if a regular human would become victim to an absurd amount of malice that's totally beyond their limit. 
Harbinger Ganon floods Astor's body with malice, forcing his skin to transition to a jet black, beginning with his arm and rapidly spreading to his face until in a matter of seconds, his entire body is stained with malice, or rather, devoured by Jackie. The reason this happens is that, visually speaking, Jackie can be recognized as a black or dark smoke-like substance that radiates outwards and continuously expands. We see more accurate depictions in Skyward Sword, where a black substance rapidly expands outwards from the imprisoned when it's breaking free from the seal that binds it, and again in Twilight Princess when Ganondorf demonstrates the ability to transform his malice into dark smoke, which is exactly how it's illustrated in Japanese culture. Jackie has been depicted this way as far back as in A Link to the Past. In the English version of A Link to the Past's manual, there is a section that explains what happened when Hyrule fell into despair after Ganon claimed the Triforce. In English, it states that evil power began to to flow from the Golden Land and greedy men were drawn there to become members of Ganon's army. However, when looking at the same passage in Japanese, the reality is much more sinister. Ganon's evil energy surged across this land of Hyrule. Greedy people were absorbed by this power and disappeared. Firstly, the term that appears for evil energy in the Japanese version of this passage is also Jackie. Secondly, it's not that these greedy people were specifically keen to join forces with Ganon, like the English version implies, but rather they were completely devoured by Ganon's evilness because of their own greed. This is very similar to Age of Calamity's Astor, who is consumed by Ganon's malice after attempting to command him. He screams in agony while being corrupted before being completely absorbed by Harbinger Ganon, vanishing without a trace, much like what happened to the humans in the Japanese version of A Link to the Past. Other times, it's common for victims of Jackie to show symptoms of illness. The infection of the evil energy in an individual can begin as a disease, making them feel ill, tired, or disorientated. The true power of this force is illustrated in Breath of the the wild as even being capable of infecting one of the three dragons, Nadra, a spirit of a goddess. Despite suffering the affliction of malice, Nadra is not hostile to Link, and instead appears somewhat depleted of energy, which could suggest that Nadra may have only recently been infected. It's entirely possible that if Link did not free Nadra from their suffering, they too may have had fallen victim to malice and become possessed, much like what we see happen to the cursed demons. It's also entirely entirely possible that one of the reasons why Zelda was unable to unlock her sealing powers in Breath of the Wild was because she had developed symptoms of Jackie, similar to Nadra. As mentioned earlier, this evil energy can manifest in one whose heart was originally pure, growing from any negative emotion at all, including anger, resentment, envy, depression, or even simple emotionally unstable thoughts. A lot of these traits appear in Zelda in Breath of the Wild. From the very first memory cutscene alone, it's more than obvious how much pressure Zelda is enduring, which only continues to worsen and burden her as she continues to be unable to awaken her power. Zelda also displays envy of Link as Urbosa confirms when she tells Link that his drawing of the Master Sword reminds her how she still hasn't achieved her own destiny, despite being a member of the royal family. She is continuously pressured by her father and by outsiders who see her as nothing but a failure, which consequently continues to fuel the negative thoughts that that plague her mind. She even takes her anger and frustration out on Link by lashing out at him to stop following her. Further implications of Malice interrupting the awakening of her powers can be found by reading her diary. Zelda writes how she's dreamed of a lone woman enveloped in a bright light who spoke to her urgently, most likely trying to warn her of the fate that awaits her. Zelda questions if she would have been able to hear the voice if she had awakened her power. The reason as to why she was unable to hear the voice in her dreams, and why she was unable to feel or hear anything while praying at the goddess statues was most likely due to Jack blocking her ability. In the English version of Skyward Sword, Zelda explains that the purpose of her visit to the goddess statues was so that memories of her previous life as Hydea would be stirred up inside of her. However, this is not true at all. In the Japanese version of this cutscene, her reasons for visiting the goddess statues are different. Having acquired the memories from the goddess statues, I was guided by the goddess's messenger, Impa. Then we finally reached this past. 
In Japanese, Zaura is much more specific. She states that she received her memories of her previous life as Goddess Hydea directly from the statues. It's not that the statues magically dug up some buried memories within her, but rather she was given the memories from the statues to themselves. This explains why Breath of the Wild Zelda visits the statues to achieve a similar thing to Skyward Sword Zelda, as it is implied that these goddess statues contain the very memories of Goddess Hylia herself. Despite this, Zelda was unable to hear or feel anything from the statues or her dreams. In Japanese culture, going to shrines and praying doesn't cleanse the jaki once it has begun to form. Instead, the effort has to come directly from the individual, meaning that receiving a blessing is not enough to cleanse the evil energy. This is because original sources of new jaki manifests inside the host and eventually consumes the individual, rather than enveloping them from the outside. For Zelda, her breaking point was when her desire to protect and save Link overrode the negative emotions that had built up inside of her. The goodness in her heart and instincts to protect flushed out the negativity allowing her to reconnect with Hylia and awaken her seeding powers. Dark energy has also affected Link in the past too, transforming him into a rabbit when he enters the dark world in A Link to the Past, or a wolf when he finds himself shrouded in the twilight in Twilight Princess. Just like how one can succumb to illness or feel tired as a result of the attacking Jackie similar to Nadra, there are also instances where Link appears tired or out of energy when he comes into contact with the cursed energy from the enemies that possess it, such as in The Wind Waker. This tells us that Link is also not invulnerable to the effects of Malice or Jackie either, which is made even clearer in this trailer for the sequel to Breath of the Wild. We've witnessed the dark possessive nature and the true evil that Malice can inflict. Not only is it shown to even be able to corrupt a life force, but can even outright consume humans. So what does this mean for Link, who seems to have taken a direct hit from this evil energy in the trailer? By looking at Link's body and most noticeably his arm, we can see how the Malice has a affected him. Much like what happens to Zelda when she's directly possessed by Ganondorf in Twilight Princess, black lines appear on Link's skin, perhaps representing the enormous amount of malice that has entered the body. We know that Jackie is the energy that forms Onnin, the very malicious power that has enabled Ganondorf to possess and corrupt life and worlds before, meaning that it's possible that Ganondorf may also be able to possess or at least interfere with the parts of Link's corrupted body in the sequel. Even gods are not immune to the influence of malice which is demonstrated in Age of Calamity. While Breath of the Wild has a bunch of strong enemies like the Hinox and the Lynels for instance, Age of Calamity reveals that even these mighty creatures can suffer the influence of malice transforming them into malice corrupted variants. In Age of Calamity, malice Lynels are not only significantly stronger than their non-corrupted counterparts but are also lightning fast with their strikes and reflexes. Even when not corrupted. Have you ever wondered why Lynels are so resilient and powerful in the first place? By looking at the game manual for the English version of the original Legend of Zelda, we can discover the reason why they are so incredible. The English version states that Lynels are the guardians of Death Mountain and that they're pretty strong. Even Link's little shield cannot deflect their sword strikes. A pretty interesting sentence, considering how Breath of the Wild's Link is more than capable of stopping a full force charging Lynel in its tracks with just a pot lid. By looking at the original Japanese text, we can discover something amazing yet absolutely terrifying. A guardian deity that repels anything that approaches Death Mountain. Their offensive power is considerably strong. Their swords cannot be deflected with a small shield. In Japanese, Lynels are referred to as gods. This means that Ganon's malice is capable of corrupting even deities or gods, which when considering that Ganondorf has already demonstrated the ability to possess Zelda and even infect Link in the trailer, makes his revival in the sequel even more menacing. If Ganondorf's malice is capable of even possessing a god, there's no telling what we may be in store for in the sequel. 
Malice has all kinds of negative influences on not just all life, but even technology too. Even demons who have minimal evil intentions can cause demonic transformations to occur in other life forms, suggesting that remnants of malice may linger after its source is depleted. Perhaps the infection of malice may see Link receive some interesting demonic power-ups in the sequel for instance. Only time will tell. On a final note, there is another property of Jackie which I couldn't find any examples examples of so far, that being that Jackie is said to have a rather distinct and pungent smell. Perhaps you've noticed something that I've missed. I'd love to hear your thoughts. For now though, that'll be all from me. I truly hope you enjoyed this video and I can't thank you enough for watching. Until next time, see you soon.